the upper register. One reason that you might not be playing so easily in the upper register, and there's just one reason, there's actually a lot, is this guy. Oops. Wait a minute. Uh oh. What am I doing this? Oh. Uh, ooh. Ha <laughs> ha. Hello. Tuba mouthpiece. Versus trumpet mouthpiece. Your mouthpiece could be putting up such an awesome fight that you are losing both the battle and the war. You're losing it all. Perfect aligned in tune efficiency allows you just to soar and soar and soar. It's like it's like a bird hovering on a thermal or even a plane for that matter. Have you ever watched planes take off when it's cold or when it's warm? Notice when it's really warm, they'll hit that thermal and they, they'll actually leave the runway um, a lot quicker and sooner before the end of that runway compared to cold, cold, cold weather. So efficiency comes from many, many different parts of our plane, including the equipment, how we breathe, how we've trained ourselves in the musculature up here, and then the three stages of compression. And there's a lot to talk about when it comes to efficiency on a brass instrument. And just because I, I'm holding this guy up, don't let that ostracize you if you play on, ooh, oh, 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 oh. yes, ma'am. Yeah, so don't be fooled. If you play a brass instrument and you play into one of these, this is for all of you. Okay. Now wait a minute. So I have a choice to play this mouthpiece. And what if I want to play this mouthpiece? Same difference? Think about it. What if I could actually put this into my, into my horn? Uh, no, it's not the same difference. In fact, that's one reason you might ha be having trouble being inefficient on the horn. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ego cockiness being a stud how many times have I killed trumpet players who couldn't play high couldn't play loud and sounded forced but guess what they were like oh yeah well Kurt you're playing on one of those cheater mouthpieces and I play on a Bach one and a half C yes or I play on a Bach three C you know and you're playing on one of those uh, cheater mouthpieces so cockiness let that cockiness and ego go down the drain because it's going to get you nowhere fast. You might feel really good going to bed at night knowing that you play it on a Bach one and a quarter C. Have you played on one of those? They actually have a Bach one and a quarter C. I used to play one because I wanted to feel better about myself. Um, I felt better about myself, but my playing sounded like crap. Okay, So I needed a lot bigger lips than these. Look at my lips. I need lips about twice this size at least to do what I can accomplish on this guy. Okay, so this, let me explain mouthpieces. So, first of all, if you're playing on the wrong mouthpiece that's inefficient, what's going to happen is, typically it's going to be too large for you, you're going to have too much air, slow air going into the mouthpiece, because the bowl is going to be too big, and I'm making an extreme example with this. I could be holding a Bach 1.5C, not, not a tube of mouthpiece. I'm making an extreme example, but so I'd have too much air going in, slow, that would be one thing. My lips won't be able to really hold the last stage of compression the aperture because what's going to happen is that as they go into a big mouthpiece, they're just naturally going to flap around slower. Sorry. There's nothing to snug them up to. There's no The bowl is so far down. No, it's almost like I'm lip buzzing. So, if now this is an extreme example, of course, folks. Um, so, inefficiency. This would be a very inefficient mouthpiece for me to play on this instrument. Now, possibly, uh, what am I holding here? It's a Yamaha 67. This might be a fantastic mouthpiece for some tuba players to be very, very efficient, maybe. Uh, maybe not. So, one thing that could be holding you back, no, I... I want to let you know, after having taught more than 1,500 individual students 
That's no joke. And three or four hundred of you in the last seven years have been advanced and professional players. I've learned a little something about what everybody's going through, and at least one thing that we all know is inefficiency in equipment. So if you are, feel like you're fighting on the horn, Beck, you heard me play what I play at the beginning, right? Themed ice castles. So if you can't get up there, now that's an easy thing for me to do, and it should be easy for any pro player to do. Hello? I only went to high F. Nothing fancy, no no fancy skips and tongues, and no, this is pretty easy. Now, if you can't get up there and soar like that and just feel good, I felt like the horn was playing itself. You see me playing? I wasn't even hardly breathing. The horn was playing itself, and was it ro It wasn't marching band or drum corps loud. Was it loud? Yeah, I probably were going to get some um, calls uh, from the neighbors here in another couple of minutes. <laughs> I mean, but it was forte. If I was playing that as a solo in a big band, jazz band, or some concert in the park series, you would definitely hear it. And um, But efficiency, folks. Efficiency. you got to get the efficiency in half, I don't even want to say half the battle, part of the battle, because it just depends. Part of the battle is the equipment. I would say it's kind of a smaller part. Um, this is a smaller part. This is a bigger part. What does that mean? That means I'd rather take my custom Bob Reese mouthpiece and put it into a Bundy trumpet and go to town than to take a stock box 7C and put it in a $20,000 Monet trumpet. Why? Because this matters less than this. So if you don't get anything out of this tutorial, invest your money in a good mouthpiece and you I had to invest over three hundred dollars in this guy. Why? This is a Bob Reeves forty three la 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 sorry. 42S, dang it, 42SB, my bad, 42, probably can't even see that, so it's no point even showing you, 42SB, that's like Sam Victor, okay, this is Bob Reeves, this rim, check it out, see if I can get the, is there anything left on, oh, there's a little bit, you're not going to be able to see it, this rim, actually came out of this mouthpiece. I had a duplicate. This is a Neil Sander 17S. Yeah, you're, you're, it's kind of dark in here, sorry. The way I got it set up, you're just not going to see it. But this is a Neil Sander 17S. They don't make them anymore. Okay, so what I did is I liked this. I liked the rim. The rim felt good. But the backboard of this is pretty large um, to do what I do. And so I really felt that I was being inefficient blowing. Now, when, when you heard me play at the beginning, I was playing on this one because uh, I built up enough chops to be able to play on just about any mouthpiece that I want, at least for a limited amount of time. Now, I wouldn't want to play this for a four-hour you know, wedding reception gig, big band, no way. Mm -mm. But anyway, so you heard me playing on this mouthpiece. It's a uh, Neil Sanders 17S. Decently shallow. Is it the most shallow mouthpiece in the world? Heck no. <laughs> and it's wide. This guy's wide very wide. That's a wide mouthpiece. It's probably as wide as a Bach 1C, uh, maybe even slightly wider, wider, but it's shallow. So I like a wide rim, but this wasn't doing the trick for me uh, for everything, and I would get tired on it. In other words, I was being, this mouthpiece was somewhat inefficient for me. I spent three to three and a half hours at Bob Reeves studio, his new studio in Valencia, uh, am I saying that right? Valencia, California, and that's right across from the Six Flags. And when I used to live in California, I went up to his office, told him what I wanted. What he did was he took this mouthpiece, because remember I had two, and he cut off the rim, put threads on it, and we went to town. And what we what he did is he brought in tons and tons of these back bores. And he didn't bring in the large ones because I told him I wasn't interested in being, I'm not going to be a, in an orchestra somewhere. I'm not going to be doing brass quintet. I'm not going to be playing third trumpet in a concert band. I'm, I'm going to be doing what I do, and I already told him what I did. And uh, 
So he threaded this. We started trying all different kinds of back bores, mixing in different sleeves over and over and over again. And it took probably the better part of a th you know, three and a half hours in an afternoon. And I ended up with this. The top is a um, top rim cut from a Neil Sanders 17S. The rest of it is Bob Bree is that 42 SV. And then this is actually a number two. I know you can see that. You're probably not going to be able to see that. It's number two. It's a number two sleeve. Now, once I got done with that, my lips are not equal. The bottom lip is quite a bit bigger than the top. I actually went to, where did I go? Was it um, Home Depot? I think it went to Home Depot, and I bought epoxy. Now, epoxy comes in two tubes. It's epoxy is what you use. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. It's like a well. It's like a, uh, temp, like a not temporary, but it's it's like a well that you can do yourself. And I what I did was I, I fashioned a little thing and put it in the mouthpiece. You can't even see that. And now I'm going to have to go out and do it again. You can see the indentation in the mouthpiece where it used to be. See that? And so it actually went into the mouthpiece like this. Oh, it's not going to be perfect, but... Ah. There we go. Perfect. Perfectly like that. Wish you could see that. There, can you see that? It's in there. I'm going to have to redo this sucker because when I was like screwing around and screwing the mouthpiece, it came out. So, this makes the mouthpiece more efficient for me because my lips are inefficient. They're not equal. This is bigger than this. And when I put my mouthpiece in, uh, I'm not getting the best compression I possibly can. And so I, I think outside the box, baby. And when I think outside the box, I do crazy stuff like this. <laughs> you can see it. There it is. See it? It's in there. That's epoxy, ladies and gentlemen. And it comes in two little tubes about the size of, well, probably about the size of my index finger, but a little bit thicker than that, a little bit longer, two of them. And what you do is you break them open, it's like Play-Doh, put them together and you roll them, get them hot, and then you can just start playing around. If your lips are unequal now, like mine, if you got, if both of your lips are equal, you don't need to mess around with it. And that's why these um, asymmetrical mouthpieces um, came into play because of the um, inequal, like the wedge mouthpiece and some other ones. Um, because of people's jaw structure and lips. So now I actually put the finishing touches with this um, on my mouthpiece. And the end result is, for me, extreme efficiency. And I'm telling you, when I'm, when I'm running on all cylinders like a Lamborghini, I don't care who's playing with me. I, I'm going to be, especially if I'm playing lead, I'm going to be pouring out some sound, baby. And I can bury any band that I want to, if I choose to. And sometimes at the end of a song, you want to bury the band because you want everybody to let that double C or that double A or that double G be dominant. Uh, otherwise, you got to use your, you know, your calibration and sound good and be a good tasting lead player. If I'm talking lead. So um, anyway, the purpose of this video was to kind of reveal a little bit more about myself, my way of thinking as far as efficiency in the horn, and also, I mean, heck, this is a this is free for you. So if you're playing on a mouthpiece, this is extreme. <laughs> doesn't sound good but I'm not a tuba player so I'm not worried about it but this would be very efficient inefficient for me and then there'd be everything related between this all the way to the most efficient most efficient least efficient for me on the trumpet everybody has this spectrum that my phone ran out of memory regarding the trumpet mouthpiece tutorial so, and I'm in here for right now. But anyway, you got the point. I exaggerated the discrepancies in trumpet mouthpiece all the way to tuba, and that one is that was an exaggeration, really. So, fighting a good fight is one thing, but fighting inefficiency is. It's tough. You might not win that one, and it might be a daily war that you wage, and you never win. So, my advice to you, and let's just put it this way. If you're doing it on your own, mm -mm. think about this. <laughs> a surgeon knows how to cut into people and operate, right? But, are they going to be any good operating on themselves? 
Not really likely. An attorney. An attorney with years of experience gets into trouble with the law. Are they going to really help themselves? They know everything about the law, and they've done it for a million years. But are they really going to do that well for themselves? Nope. Sorry. You know, there was a saying about the attorney thing, was that a person who represents themselves as an attorney at law has a fool for an attorney. And you might just say the same thing about music. Really. <laughs> So many people sound like shit, sound average, have problems, the same problems over and over and over and over again. And they're trying to do the surgery on themselves. They're trying to write that summons and complaint by themselves. Mm -mm. I don't care how many years of experience you have. But the more years of experience you do have and the more that you keep failing... Doesn't that say something here? You need someone who knows what they're talking about and can practice what they preach, hold your hand, and take you to the next level and turn that light bulb. Why aren't you doing it? It's usually cha-ching. Cha-ching. A little something about myself before I let you go. My freshman year in college, Everybody was taking a half an hour to an hour lesson, right? And that was kind of included in the curriculum. What did I do? I got a job at Kroger in Tennessee. Started bagging groceries. They called it a courtesy clerk. I did that so I could pay for two hours of lessons every week for the entire freshman year in college. So I was doing double duty, and I paid out the you-know-what for that. Guess what? What I got in return, nobody has ever been able to take away from me. Gold in my pocket. Did I have to pay for it? Yes. Did I pay someone else who was actually like me? Yes, I paid a trumpet teacher to college. Did they make money off of me? Yes, they made money off of me. A lot. But I got good, I got educated, and I got what I needed. In fact, I've triple advanced myself by doing that. So if you're sitting there, it's the cha-ching. You'd rather have $200 in your bank account instead of get better at your instrument. <laughs> and you're like 50 or you're 60. I feel sorry for you. Real sorry. Real sorry. Yes, Check your bank account and be happy that you got that $200 or $300 in your account and it makes you feel warm and fuzzy. And then get out your horn and you play like crap. Or you go to rehearsal and you can't last. Or you can never play lead or when you do play lead you sound like shit. So yes, you do all that and at the end of the day you open up your bank account and feel all warm and fuzzy that you got those extra dollars that you never spent on your education. Extra education. I don't care if you have a PhD or DMA. If you aren't playing that well at this point in life, my friend, you didn't spend enough on your education. Bar none. The way it is. And think about me years ago as a little bitty skinny freshman, 18 year old freshman in college, working my freaking ass off, bagging groceries, taking that crap out in the rain in Tennessee. So I could take two one-hour lessons each week for a year. Amazing, amazing, right? Now, you're probably thinking, uh, what a tool. Well, this tool that you might be thinking of kicked everybody's butt. And now here I am right now, teaching people that got DMAs, PhDs, Masters. So that extra hour of lesson each week when I was 18 has become gold, big golden nuggets in my pocket. Would I have rather bought a new car? Yes. Would I have rather watched the numbers grow in my bank account? To 500, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, yes. But would I have rather sucked it 
and been average. Mm-mm. No. You got a choice to make. And you can get on your laptop now and check your bank account and be warm and fuzzy that you have an extra couple hundred dollars in your bank account, but you're going to go to your rehearsal this week and suck ass. Or you're going to flip-flop and actually do what you know you need to do. Come on now. Am I talking to a 40-year-old, a 50-year-old, a 60-year-old who still can't play? You should be playing better than me. You're a lot older than I am. But why aren't you? Priorities, my friend. And you make the wrong choices in life and you kind of sow what you reap, right? Or reap what you sow. The old Bible verse. You have a good night and you really think about what I said. Get out your horn. See if you can do what I did right off the cuff at the beginning of this video. Too hard? It really shouldn't be hard at all. It should be easy at this point in life. That's my lecture to you, especially to my older trumpet playing friend. You should not have arrived at 40, 50, 60, or 70 and be sucking it. I don't care if you have a million dollars in your account. What's that worth if you suck it? Bye-bye.